after the women would pass, he would either take the bodies to a meat rendering plant or he would grind them up himself and feed them to the pigs on his farm. The family pig farm ended up becoming the largest crime scene in Canadian history. For nearly two years, 102 anthropologists sifted through 370,000 cubic yards of mud and manure trying to find as many missing women as possible. I mean, the Canadian officials really put the investigation as a priority at this point. Robert and his siblings ended up inheriting the whole entire farm and they ended up getting millions for selling a part of it. Now, not only were they just kinda living their lives at this point, they began a non-profit, we'll say a non-profit charity, and they named it the Piggy Palace Times Society. They claimed that it was to organize and coordinate and manage and operate special events, functions, dances, shows, and different like exhibits on behalf of service organizations or sports organizations or other organizations that were worthy groups. However, in reality, these charity events were allegedly raves and parties, big parties that the brothers held in the farm's slaughterhouse. As a matter of fact, their parties were uh, very well known by the locals and often had like 2,000 people attending them. Some of these party goers were said to be from like the Hells Angels bikers and there were supposedly a lot of S workers that were there as well. Now these parties eventually ended up getting so out of hand that the city came in and was violating them for different zoning reasons, essentially meaning that they were having parties on land that was zoned for agricultural use. And after a really wild New Year's Eve party, the police were given authorization to arrest and remove any person that was attending like future parties at the farm. So obviously they had to come up with a new idea because now the police could just go in and arrest anybody that was there. A year later, the charity's nonprofit status ended up being removed and it was eventually disbanded. Oddly enough, when you are in a town, right, and you go from being the stinky kid, the stinky adult, to now a multimillionaire, this is when Robert was able to get a little attention that maybe he had always wanted, but never had. Initially, Robert was arrested on two charges and not long after though four more charges were added. Robert's trial ended up beginning on January 30th of 2006 and Robert pled not guilty to all 27 charges. The judge actually rejected one of those charges and grouped the other 26 into just two groups. One group of six charges and uh, the second group of 20 charges. Now there ended up being a ban that was put on reporters so the details of the trial are not totally clear or complete, but it is said that the judge said Said she split these charges up because proceeding with the full 26 would have been too big of a burden on the jurors and the trial itself could have lasted over two years with that many charges. And remember, Robert had the money too for attorneys and, and anything and dragging it out. It's not like he had a life or a family or something to get back home to. He could have drug it out and it could have been whatever, okay? Now, once Robert's trial got underway though, more information about the investigation began to come out. A worker at the farm named Bill called the farm a creepy looking place that was guarded by not only like guard dogs, but by a 600 pound boar, okay? A boar, not an electric fence, not a, a do not trespass sign, but a bunch of dogs and a 600 pound boar. In the three years after Robert's arrest, Bill, that same worker, noticed that women who came to the farm would usually end up going missing. Eventually, Bill himself reported this to the police. However, it wasn't until 2002 that the cops actually ended up going to the farm and searching. At the time, they were looking for illegal firearms after receiving a tip. What they ended up finding though was items belonging to multiple missing women. Because of this, because the professionals knew that he did and he was capable of grinding human meat, the government reported that Robert had may have actually ground up human flesh, 
mixed it with pork, and sold it to the public for years. The local health authority had to issue like a, a real public warning about this. And I even saw photos of different events that they had put on and they had like sausage cooking y'all, pork sausage. And let me tell y'all, we've, we've heard of stories like this before when it comes to pork. It's always pork, seemingly, that, that, that people do this, pork sandwiches, pork this, pork that, but Imagine living in that town. Imagine, you know, that's the pig farm. They're making millions. So obviously people think they got the best pork around. So to get a pork hot dog or a sausage link or something like that from them was a treat. People came and gathered and ate it. And then all this came out. During the search of the farm, a loaded 22 revolver was found with a rubber, long, uh, we'll just say adult toy over the barrel, okay? There was night vision goggles that were found, fuzzy handcuffs were found, and a syringe with blue liquid inside was found. When asked about all these items, Robert said that he attached the toy to his revolver to use it as a makeshift silencer. Weird, weird. A videotape of one of Robert's friends was played. In the video, the friend says that Robert told him a good way to end a female's life was to inject her with windshield wiper fluid. Now this sounds really consistent with what the investigators ended up finding in their search at the farm. Another video was played of another one of Robert's friends saying that Robert had mentioned to him that he had ended the lives of S workers by handcuffing them, strangling them, and then hanging them and doing them like you do meat before feeding them to his pigs. This sounds also very consistent with what happened with Wendy, one of the S workers, she was able to escape. When she escaped, she went and told the local police what happened. However, Wendy had a really bad problem and the prosecutor believed that she was too unstable to be a reliable witness. However, way later, interrogation footage ends up coming out and it shows Robert being questioned about this event. And on December 9th of 2007, the jury found Robert not guilty, y'all, on all six counts of first degree murder. However, they did end up finding him guilty on six counts of second degree murder. I don't know how they came to that, but okay. The judge sentenced Robert to life without the possibility of parole for 25 years, which was the maximum sentence that they could give him there. Now, it is important to note that the judge said that the sentence that he got, the 25 to life, okay, that would have been the same exact thing if he would have been convicted for first degree because that is the max that they could give somebody there, which is, in my personal opinion, absolutely bonkers that you can do that to that many people and still be eligible to get out in 25 years, but nevertheless. After his conviction, the other 20 charges ended up just being dropped. A spokesperson said that this was because any additional convictions couldn't result in any increase to the sentence that Robert had anyways, which is wild to me because if you are a crazy person, you would think, why just end one person's life when you can end a hundred? Because you're going to get the same sentence anyways. And you're going to get a second shot in 25 years. I don't know, y'all. Some family members were uh, really disappointed over this decision. And others were grateful that they would not have to relive the gruesome details like through everything in court. The victim's children, however, ended up filing a civil lawsuit in May of 2013 against the Vancouver Police Department and the Royal Canadian Mounted Police and the Crown for failing to protect the victims. They reached a settlement in March of 2014 and each child was compensated 50,000 Canadian dollars without admission of liability. And to this day, it's not known just how many women that Robert killed, but prosecutors say that Robert told an undercover officer in his jail cell that he had killed 49 women and he was disappointed that he could not even make it an even 50. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> that's what I, that's what I 
This video was actually played during Robert's trial, yet somehow the jury could not find him guilty of only six counts of first degree murder after all of that. In February of this year, Robert became eligible for parole. Okay, so February of this year, 2024. However, May 19th of this year, right before his parole hearing, something strange happened. The hearing had to be rescheduled because Robert was attacked by another prisoner, another inmate in there with him. Now the inmate's name is allegedly Martin and it is said that Robert was speared in the head with a broken broom handle. He ended up being airlifted to the hospital and put on life support where he later passed away on May 31st. But there are people that are saying that they believe the reason why he was killed right before his parole hearing was because he was going to release the other people that were involved. If it's true, we'll never know at this point, but the families, they got a little compensation, obviously not enough for, for their family members being gone and maybe never seeing their family members, if any of them were seeing them maybe get to change and become better. But at least I hope that they find comfort that Robert is not gonna get out and he can't do it to anybody else. Other than that, I love y'all. Thank y'all so much for watching this video and I will see y'all in the next one. Love you guys. Bye.